Hello everyone, my name is Ever Barbero, and today I'd like to talk about example 3.11, in my textbook, Finite Element Analysis of Composite Materials Using Abacus. In this example, we show you how to simulate a wide flange column, also called double T, or H column. It is a good example to learn how to apply symmetry at one half length of the column, and load at the end of the column without blocking the rotation, to simulate the Euler buckling mode. The web and flanges are made of different composite materials, represented by their ABDH matrices. We will calculate the axial displacement at the loaded end, and use again this model to do buckling calculations in Chapter 4. To build the part, we create the cross section, then extrude it along half the length of the column. We enter the laminate properties directly by creating a shell section for the flange, and another for the web. Each section is defined by their ABDH matrices, which we calculated ahead of time using Kadek. The link to Kadek is in the description. The ABD matrix is a symmetric 6x6 six six matrix, so we enter only the upper part including the diagonal. A is a 3x3 three three matrix located on the upper left corner. D is in the lower right corner and B occupies the top right corner. The values of transverse shear stiffness, in the H matrix, go in tab advanced, but they are labeled K11, K12, and K22. The correspondence with the classical notation, H44, H45, and H55, is explained in the textbook. In Kadek, use the left menu tree, to go to, Macro Mechanics, Intact Material, ABD and H. This page lets you calculate the ABDH matrices in terms of the laminate selected in the first drop box, at the top of the page. Of course, you have to define the laminate before getting here. Right now it is showing 090 symmetric, which is not what we need for this example, just for illustration. Now pay attention to the link at the bottom of the page, that reads, to Excel. Click on it. When you click the link to Excel, Kadek opens Excel, to show you the results of whatever laminate you selected in the previous page. And here you have the ABD and H matrices calculated for you. Next, assign sections to regions, first to the flange regions, then to the web region. Next, we define a user coordinate system, CSYS, first for the web, then for the flange. This will help us define the laminate orientations. Next, we assign material orientations, first for the web, then for the flanges. 
a single material orientation for each region is enough, because the ABDH matrices, completely define the stiffness of the laminate. However, this will not be adequate to compute ply-by-ply -ply stresses. For assembly, we just create an instance of the single part that we have. As usual, we need a step for the loads. Next, we show you how to use the interaction module, to force the end of the column to rotate like a rigid surface, while allowing for axial displacement, so that a load can be applied. Otherwise, the Euler buckling mode would be artificially suppressed. The procedure is further explained in the textbook. Now we put a concentrated load on the reference point, RP, that we created earlier. Since the RP is attached to the tie nodes region, the load will push all nodes simultaneously. Now we apply symmetry boundary conditions at the other end of the model, which is at half the length of the actual column, since everything is symmetric, including geometry, material, load, and boundary conditions, all symmetric with respect to the half length of the column, we just need to model one half of the column length. Now we mesh. Notice that we seed the edges differently, to get the mesh refinement that we want. Also note that we use 6 degrees of freedom elements, because the shell is folded, meaning that it has 90 degree intersections between the web and flanges, so the 6th degree of freedom, called drilling rotation, is needed to transfer rotations from web to flange and vice versa. Now we create a set, called C point, or center point to restrict the axial displacement of the column here. Since symmetry is applied to the cross sections, supporting just one point is sufficient. In this way, the axial load will be resisted here, and no axial displacement will take place at the C point, but all other displacements of the cross section are allowed, as long as they respect the symmetry.
Now back to module load, to apply the axial restraint to the C point. As usual, we need a job. Once submitted and completed, click results. For results, let's look at the axial displacement, U3. Okay, that's it for today. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. You can find more details in the textbook, by following the link in the description. Thank you.